This is the moment we've all been waiting for. This essentially is the reason why we even made the uh, tier list for tribes in the first place. And that, of course, is the almighty, all-powerful, completely overpowered clock synergy tribe. Look at this clock pent up I don't know why. <laughs> Clocks energy is so off that they only need one. Exactly. You don't need anything else. This has synergy in itself. Usually synergy, you need like two cards. Clock synergy is so good, you, you only need one. What's going on everybody? This is Fry. So today I'm really excited to do the tribe tier list. A lot of people have been asking for this. Now, what is tribes? It means we're going to be going through the different synergies uh, in the game. Like we're going to be starting off first with animals. So all of these little things, we're going to go through corn, mushroom, gargantuar, gourmet, all of them. And uh, I'm going to be rating them on the tier list. So we're basically going to be putting them uh, on the tier list based on three criteria. The first of all, we're going to be looking at how are the overall quality of cards in that particular tribe? Are they good or are they just a bunch of trash? The second thing we're going to be looking at is, is there actually synergy between the tribes? Uh, meaning like mushroom synergy, like do the cards actually work together well? Uh, the third thing we're going to be looking at, which is really going to be the criteria for putting it up in S tier, is is it worth it? to actually base a deck uh, based on the synergy within that tribe. Just because a bunch of cards say dancing or mushrooms on it does not mean that you should be going and throwing all of those in a deck together. Some of the synergies really do work well towards a win condition and certain uh, do not. So uh, we're going to be going through uh, all the tribes here, starting with Animal. Huge shout out to Barry Bama, who actually compiled a very creative little way of putting the different cards representation and the... Um, name of the tribes on these icons he's been putting in a lot of work every week for these tier lists recently uh huge shout out to you and we are going to start right off with the tribe on the plant side this is going to be animal synergy so there is no synergy between animals but the overall quality of cards is really good like this is meh but you have all the dinosaurs uh in this tribe which are very good you got triceratops uh, the Raptors, you have a Bananasaurus Rex, Potatosaurus, you got Burb, you got Lima Florida. I mean, so this really does have very high overall quality of cards. Of course, there are a couple uh, which are trashed. This is one of the tribes in the game that people ask me, like, what would you like to see in set five? Uh, if they will ever make a set five for this uh, for this game. And one of the things I'd love to see is some actual animal synergy cards, maybe an environment or a card which really... Uh, create some synergy in this class. So I can't put this on the top of the list because again, there really is no synergy uh, between in this tribe. Um, but overall quality of cards are are really, really high. I mean, this is basically as good as it gets. I mean, you have actually some of the best cards, some of the premier best cards in the entire game are actually in this tribe, even Guacadile. Really, really nice. Uh, I will be putting it, I'm basically going to be reserving S and A tier for uh, tribes that actually have some synergy, but I'll be putting this on the top of the rung in terms of the non-synergy tribes, uh, and we're going to be putting it in B tier. That's really nice and solid for a tribe with no synergy. All right, next, <laughs> it's time for, I'm just going to be typing these in one at a time here. So we can see what's in the box. Banana Tribe. <laughs> this is the Banana Tribe. All right. So we do have a couple of very good cards um, <laughs> in this tribe. We got Banana Star Strikes and Brainana, two of the better cards in the game, uh, which is okay. You also have a bunch of crap. <laughs> Thank you so much, King Bean, for subscribing. Really appreciate it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you have Banana Bomb, which is good, Banana Peel, which is just meh. The, there is synergy in the Banana class, but unfortunately, it's only with this one card. And thank you so much, banana synergy S -tier. Dasherman. <laughs> banana Synergy S tier, exactly. Uh, is half banana. Now, we have had some success doing decks that are banana synergy uh, with, with half banana. Uh, that when this dies, this will grow your other bananas. So maybe you can do it with Banana Launcher. Mostly, you're just looking... Uh, to buff your Bananasaurus Rex, let's say, uh, with a half banana. The, the problem is, the main problem with this tribe is that there's so few cards. So your half banana, even if you're running as many bananas as you can, first of all, you're running crap, like banana split, not a good card. 
Um, but even if you're running all the bananas, when you're half banana, when it, first of all, you're not necessarily going to get this early in the game. Second of all, even when you get it, you're not necessarily going to have more than like one other banana in your hand. You could end up with zero in your hand. And even if your banana is in your hand, is either banana bomb or banana peel, uh, which you weren't able to play yet. It's not even going to get buffed by the bananas. Essentially, it buffs potentially four cards. Uh, really just two cards in its class, and then one hero, Captain Combustible, gets this banana, and then uh, Nightcap <laughs> can make a Nightcap banana that gets Brainana. So, uh, not a very good tribe for Synergy. I'd love if there were more bananas in the game. That would just be amazing. Uh, then you could actually make this into a tribe, into a Synergy, because again... This is a very decent card if there were a whole bunch more bananas uh, in the game. So maybe more bananas for set five. That would be really cool. Uh, because it's overall met, again, we've made a couple of good banana decks. It does have some synergy. It has overall pretty good cards, just not enough. Really, that's the problem. Even if there were some mediocre bananas, this would end up being a lot better. I'm just going to kind of put this in C tier. It has a little synergy. It is usable. Again, banana decks, it's a thing. Barely. Uh, and speaking of barely, what a nice segue that was. We are going to go right into the barrel tribe on the zombie side. <clears throat> All right. This has no synergy whatsoever. The only weird synergy uh, is in Barrel of Barrels as a card. Uh, this will conjure a barrel. Now, this doesn't actually mean there's synergy. That doesn't actually work together better uh, with <laughs> other barrel cards. This actually used to be a very good card when it cost one. They nerfed it to two. Uh, there is a little bit of synergy between, maybe I'll take that back, between Barrel of Barrels and some of the other, like, barrel cards, because this is a control card. So if you're running it in a sort of control deck, you end up with a couple, not a lot, <laughs> but you have Rocket Science now, you have Final Mission, Barrel of Dead Beards, Toxic Waste, so you do have some control cards, <laughs> and such a weak synergy, it's so sad. In general, the there again, there's a few good cards in this, but they're mostly trash. Mostly trash. This is not a good card to even conjure. Ugh. Okay, this is an okay card. Toxic Waste Imp is fine. This is horrible. And then, you, of course, you have Booty. I think Booty itself takes this whole class down a rung. Ugh. When you get, like, <laughs> barrel barrels and you get loose cannons, like, things. Charge your opponent's block meter. Uh, barrel synergy is super sad, and you certainly can't the little synergy it has is completely useless. It really essentially doesn't. Overall quality of cards, they're just meh. Hmm. Booty. Should I put this in C or D? I guess it's not as good as bananas. I'm putting barrel synergy in D. It's pretty bad. All right, what's next? Beans. Let's get our... I have to switch to the plant side. It doesn't like let you search for both. Weird. Bean. Bean there. Done that. All right. So bean synergy is actually good. There's really one, one and a half bean synergy cards. The main bean synergy card, of course, is this guy right over here, Admiral Navy Bean, which again is very viable. If you, Admiral, you know, Admiral Navy Bean decks where you're just swarming a lot of beans on the field are viable. Uh, they they are answered easily to field clear and small removal. If they have enough bungee plumbers and chickenings and weed sprays and stuff, that's going to counter this. But otherwise, these can really take over a uh, game, especially against heroes without a lot of small removal, like huge Giganticus and Super Brains. Overall, quality of bean cards are also okay. I would say the other half synergy, I guess this counts as a synergy card with beans, is that when you do bean evolution, this will bounce one of your opponent's things off the field, plus grow this. Uh, essentially by 1-1 one, one because it does a bounce immediately. So I guess this also sort of synergizes with the other bean cards because jump the other cards that really bounce your opponent's stuff off the field are jumping bean and spring bean. Um, so I guess there's that synergy there. Overall quality of cards are actually really good. I mean, you got Click B, you got Black IP, which is fine. These two cards are kind of meh. Espresso is kind of meh. But, you know, when in, in the Smarty class, these are fine. You got a few trash. This is good with Admiral Navy being in. It's decent. Really, overall, Mayflower is meh. Decent quality of cards overall, though. Um, I can't exactly say that this is going to be like S tier in terms of the synergy, but it's definitely viable. Overall quality of cards are fine. 
The Synergy is definitely playable for a deck. It's not the best one in the game. I I'll put Beans in A tier. Because uh, it fits all the criteria. It's just, I'm not going to say it's the best Synergy in the game. Even though it is quite viable. Pretty high quality of cards too. Uh, solid A tier for Beans. Alright, now let's go into one. Now, if we had been uh, doing this tier list a couple years ago, Barry would have been very different. This class used to actually be this tribe used to be as a tribe probably the strongest tribe in the game back uh before they nerfed the sergeant strongberry and the strawberry now this used to be a 3-3 and more importantly it used to say when you play a berry this will damage um one damage in zo to zombies that are next door but also in this lane which essentially gives it a way to protect itself particularly when you play strawberry on three and then sergeant strongberry on four that will actually do three damage to the guy in his lane so being able to keep this on the field just gives you more and more value uh besides for again three cost three three having been a good strong card uh, the Sergeant and Strongberry also used to be a 4-4, which made it a lot harder to remove than a 4-3. doesn't die to Lightning Bolt. Stuff like that. Now, they nerfed these cards. They nerfed the Berry Tribe all the way down. Berry, berry decks were really, really good back in the day. Oh, I guess the third Berry Synergy card, which I didn't mention, is High Voltage Current, which is, again, works very well with the Sergeant Strongberry and the Strawberryan because they're constantly doing little bits of damage. Uh, so this would actually uh, grow very fast. It also works very well if you do a lot of damage with, with Sour Grape. So after they nerfed Strawberryan and Sergeant Strongberry, the Berry Tribe, it's still viable to make Berry decks. People ask me, Friar, Berry decks still viable? They're still, like, okay, but they're really... Very, very far from being, you know, on the top of the meta, top tier uh, in this game. All right, so overall quality of cards in the Berry Tribe uh, are actually very good. You have the, again, Elderberry, which is top tier cards. These are going to be, this is good in one in one deck. Mega <laughs> Grapes of uh, Great Power. Haven't really found a good deck for Great Power. It's kind of useful in one or two decks. Uh, you have the Almighty Berry Blast. High Voltage Current's not bad. Again, these are decent. You got your Poison Ivy, which is a very good aggro card. This is a very good budget aggro card. Uh, so pretty high quality. Again, can't really make a deck out of this anymore uh, on the highest level of the game. It would, it, I think it would almost be a uh, injustice to put this in the same class as Bean. I would say it's closer to Animal since its synergy is... Its synergy obviously is better than Animal Synergy, but its overall quality of cards is worse. There is some trash in this, <laughs> in this class, too. I think Barry belongs right in B. B for Barry. Uh, it has more synergy than animals, but poor cards. I think that's right where it belongs. Next, Cactus. Cactus is a tribe? <laughs> Let's see how many cac cacti there are. Uh, there's five cactuses. So, yeah, there's some really good ones. Some above average ones and then some crap. <laughs> so bad. So bad. Ca the actual cactus. Piece of trash garbage. Uh, only five things in this class. Overall quality of cards. Again, there's good and then there's some of the worst. It's like the best and worst card in the game, basically. No synergy. Uh, it has some redeeming qualities, and that's why the only reason we're putting this in D and not in F. <laughs> I think this would be okay. All right, guys. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. This essentially is the reason why we even made the uh, tier list for tribes in the first place. And that, of course, is the almighty, all-powerful, completely overpowered clock synergy tribe. Look at this clock pent up I don't know why. <laughs> Clock synergy is so up that they only need one. Exactly. You don't need anything else. This has synergy in itself. Usually synergy, you need like two cards. Clock synergy is so good, you, you only need one. It's like the only self-synergetic card in the deck. I don't know what. Why did this have to be a tribe? I don't understand, but it, it's so mind-blowing. I, I really don't think that we can really justify putting this Anywhere on the tier list other than just straight into S tier. I mean, seriously, overall quality of cards, overall synergy, deck viability, everything's right there. And clock synergy 
is going right into S tier. I have nothing left to say. I'm speechless. That's how that's how good clock synergy is. Next. Moving right along to corn. <laughs> should make no it should make clock synergy have its own tier. <laughs> Fine, screw it, we're doing it. La 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 la. Uh, what color should I choose for this? We'll choose, uh, it'll be, I don't know. <laughs> Running out of colors. Aha! Guys, we're putting this in clock tier. No, wait. No. You go here. And you... God damn it. You... You're supposed to be yellow. And you're supposed to... Jesus. <laughs> and you're supposed to be this color. There. Clock synergy. Easily the best, easily the best class. I had to make its own class. All right, next. Next, next, next. Now this one's supposed to be white. All right, easy. Easy, easy, easy peasy. Uh, we're moving right along to corn. Now, corn. <laughs> is this corn? No, this doesn't even have corn synergy. <laughs> it's tri corn. Okay, so ignore this one and um, <laughs> ignore Mayflower. I mean, I, I suppose it has corn synergy just because it, it can conjure a corn. So, but really, there's four, five corn cards. You got uh, which is not so great. This is fine. This is mad. This is great. And this is. Ugh. Corn synergy. There's no actual synergy, of course. Do the cards even synergize together? I don't know. Guys, listen, it's corn, okay? Don't mess. Mayflower OP just because it can conjure these wonderful. Usually, when you conjure Cornucopia, you don't end up even having a chance to play it. It's too expensive. Cornucopia should cost eight or nine. Something like that. Corn hub. The heck you got the whole chat is just spamming spamming the word corn hub. I don't even know what that means, guys. It's the house of the corn. I, I don't even know. But anyway, uh yeah, corn's gotta go in. <laughs> uh, I guess there's a couple good cards in corn. Fine. Just because there's a couple of good corn cards, we're putting it in D. Together with cactus and barrel. Next, we're moving on to dancing. Ooh, here's a little, here's a little nugget. Here's a little gem. So, I, something I want to tell you guys right off the bat about dancing. Uh, people really make the mistake of just throwing a whole bunch of dancing cards uh, into a deck and saying, hey, great, we have synergy, this is a good deck now. Just because there is a card that has dancing synergy does not mean it needs to be in the dancing deck. And the main card I'm talking about um, it, when I say that is aerobics instructor. Now, every once in a while, I do run this in a dancing deck. Don't say, hey, Fry, you ran this in, you know, the ramp dance deck. Aerobics instructor is not a reliable synergy card uh, because it's a dry zombie, two cost, two, three. The opponent, any good opponent is going to have a way to remove this off the field. They can have berry blast. They can have any plant that does three or even four damage on turn two, which there's plenty. They can have a galactic cactus. There's just so many things that really answer the aerobics instructor. Plus, the aerobics instructor only has synergy if both it and another dancing zombie survives on the field. I guess it does buff itself, uh, so it doesn't necessarily need other zombies, but it's certainly lacking in its high, you know, for high, how high risk this is, its high reward is only going to be if you're, it is going to be able to be buffing something besides for itself. Now, the good dancing synergy cards, there are two of them. Uh, and that is going to be these two cards right here. Uh, Headhunter, I, I used to say when Headhunter came out, I didn't understand this as a card. This is actually a very, very solid card. I feel like whenever I do a Headhunter deck, uh, I end up having success with it. This is very, very good also with the Dance Off Superpower, which is both a dancing trick and creates two backup dancers. Uh, that will actually activate this three times for that reason. Uh, so, you know, if you're able to uh, upgrade this from one of your cheap little dancers, Headhunter becomes then Bullseye and becomes a 5-6. Uh, it also evolves really, really well from Disco Dance Floor because then it'll have three Overshoot, which is really, really good. If you want to check out probably the best dancing synergy deck, look on the Frime Up Gaming channel. That's my secondary channel for all those you don't know. Uh, that was the Ramp, Professor Brainstorm Ramp dance deck. Really utilize Headhunter to really its highest potential, in my opinion. 
And the last card, which is a decent card too, it's not bad, uh, is the Flamenco Zombie. This is a very, very strong finisher in Dancing Deck specifically. Uh, this can do a lot of damage to your opponent's face. Uh, you know, e even just with two other dancers on the field, five costs, six damage directly to your opponent's face is just a lot. Really decent finisher. Of course, it's circumstantial and has very weak stats, but it definitely has a place sort of in the meta. All right, so what are the overall quality of cards? You have a lot of, like, crap, crap. You have some decent cards. Uh, this is, like, below average, very below average. Eh, this is a really hard card to use. Unlife of the Party seems to have some uses. Not really good. A lot of actual crap, <laughs> a lot of crap. But the if you can build a dancing deck well, you can actually get some synergy. There are some top tier cards also. Not even talking about binary stars right now. Of course, you have the Almighty Valk, which is a dancing. Why is this dancing? I don't get it. Because it's, I, I don't, why is this a, can someone explain why this is a dancing card? Because of an opera and they dance and no, they don't. No, they don't. This doesn't make any sense. Who, who the heck saw an opera and said, wow, that was a great dancing performance. Anyway, I guess they're including anything that with singing like loudmouth. But anyway. All right. So is the synergy? It's not one of the top synergies in the game. It is viable. Uh, overall quality of cards are really bad. <laughs> it's not one of the best synergies in the game. I certainly want to discourage budget players from making dance decks because they're kind of only good if you have four headhunters. Really not a good budget option. It's not nearly as good as Bean Synergy, so I'm going to be putting Dancing in Solid Beat. Again, it has some solid cards. It has the Almighty Valk for some weird reason. I hardly don't even want to, really don't even want to factor that in. It, it, this is viable for deck building. It's not one of the best decks in the game, even though it's, it is viable. Uh, quality cards are low. I think it deserves to be right in B. Right in Bucket Boy tier. All right, next. <laughs> Next, it's Dragon Synergy on the, <laughs> on the, uh, <laughs> I love this creative little, little, uh, icon over here. As you guys can see, it's in the, um, it's just two cards. You got Snap, oh, Snap, and you got Dragon Fruit. So Dragon Fruit is a very good card. Snapdragon is an okay card that does work in some tempo scheme decks. Um, yeah. So overall, not a big tribe. Overall quality of cards is, I guess, slightly above average with the dragon, but not a whole lot going and certainly no synergy. Uh, I'm just going to put dragon in. It's more, better than these trash <laughs> D tier ones. I'll, I'll just stick that right in and see. All right, moving right along to flower. Now, this is, this is actually a very unique tribe. Um, there's only, I believe, two synergies in the flower tribe. Uh, one of them, of course, is the Almighty Briar Rose, which actually, this itself makes Flower Tribe, like, have, it's gonna be, like, two or three rungs higher than it would have been. The other one, of course, is Power Flower. This is going to heal you for each flower you have on the field, which, again, this is an okay card. This actually is a very good card, particularly for budget players, uh, particularly for aggro decks. Actually, very decent, very underrated card. Uh, it does heal you a little bit, which will sometimes help you win a race. So, uh, the, the Briar Rose, even though this used to cost four, this was the best card in the game. Even at five, every time I run Briar Rose in a deck, I really do not regret it. Uh, the flowers are very, actually, particularly synergetic with Briar Rose because you can ramp and get Briar Rose in earlier, which makes it more powerful. And you also have uh, this flower right over here, the Little Buddy, which really, if you have Briar Rose on the field, this can easily protect any of your guys and really just give you free kills. Um, so that's, that's, that's what's good about that. What are the overall quality of the, uh, flower cards? I mean, you have some actual really, really good flower cards. See, I think if, if flower cards did not have so many solid picks, like forget me nights, like Galactic Cactus, you have your pop and poppies, you have even cards like Fireweed, a lot of like really weird little, uh, flowers in this. Of course, there's a lot of crap. No, <laughs> of course, there's a lot of like bad flowers. <laughs> Whoa, but you have enough good ones that you have like a lot of options when you're running Bryros. You even have some like just half decent cards like Morning Glory, uh, which is fine. I guess the other sort of flower synergy I didn't think of that is Cosmic Sunflower. It's 
not exactly synergy, but it creates a tribe. This isn't a good card anyway. Um, no, guys, Cro Chromag is the best card in the game. Of course, that's what I meant. I, 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 I that was an accident, complete by accident, guys. Plus, Petalmorphosis is a flower. <laughs> Why? Because it has petals, guys. Shut up. Um, so the, the, the fact that flowers are anyway really good cards is actually what makes Briar Rose at five cost still like a very, very viable card. Man, you got some really good cards in this class, though. I mean, really, absolutely. This is this might be one of the best classes in terms of just the overall how many top tier cards. How many S tier, by the way? I put this in A tier in the tier list. This needs to be an S. How many S tier cards do you even have in this class? Like, really, really A and S tier. Absolutely ridiculous. Um, again, you got the little synergy. You got a little buddy. Oh, really, really high. Uh, I would... I'm going to put Flower. Man, I'm considering S. I'm going to put this in A because, again, very high quality of cards. Definitely viable to build decks around the synergy. I'm not going to say it is the synergy which is going to, like, carry a deck, even though sometimes it could. I I'm I'm close to putting this in S. Uh, you're going to see the types of cards, uh, the types of tribes I'm actually going to put in S that I feel like the whole deck, the things I'm reserving S tier for is the whole deck is just completely based on one certain tribe, and that will absolutely dominate games. I don't think Flower is... Flower is actually has this. Flower is a support class. So you're going to need win conditions. You're going to need something happening besides your flower synergy in order to take over a game. Even though, again, it's extremely viable. It's got to be in the same category as, as Bean, which also Bean sort of probably does need another thing to be happening in the deck other than your Bean synergy. Uh, the things I'm going to be putting in S, the only thing you need in the deck <laughs> to be working is that tribe synergy. So we'll be reserving that for a little bit later. And that brings us very neatly on to one of the best cl classes in the game. <laughs> it's Flytrap, guys. That's what we're going with now. There is a Flytrap. I don't know why. I don't know what happened to this game. There is there's a Flytrap. I know I'm covering half the cards. Tribe. So you got meh, and then you got <laughs> extra meh, and then you have nauseating, oh, gross. Uh, you have this card, which is basically viable in, you know, a couple of heal decks. It's not even one of the greatest cards in the game. And then you have, uh, this is a pretty decent card. So there's no synergy. This is not even one of the best cards in the game. It's, it's a viable card, but it's not even one of the best cards in the game. And you have so much crap. <laughs> and it's a small tribe. And there's no synergy. <laughs> All right, this is the one. I think F stands for Flytrap. This is really, really bad. Come on, Flytrap Synergy. Why did you have to be a thing? Such a disappointment. Really just not making it. All right, let's move on to, to fruit. So here's the fruit tribe. We got some fruit. These are actually pretty decent cards. This is okay. Good. Uh, uh, it's okay. <laughs> Everything's just at okay or like really below average. Really. Oh, oh, it hurts. This is fine. Oh. Uh, okay, fig. <laughs> this tribe is crap. There's a couple of good cards. I feel like you end up having like one like decent card, and very good, and then just a whole <laughs> garbage. <gasps> it has dragon fruit. That's a good card. Uh, the solar fruit fruit are not that bad. These are all actually above average cards. Cuke is fine. Hornicopia is. Below average, but it's okay. So no fruit synergy. It would be cool if there was fruit synergy, maybe. Maybe that could make this into a tribe. I'm seeing like a lot of amphibious stuff going on. So maybe there would be some, I don't know, fruit amphibious synergy. Don't even know. Thank you, Dasher Man. Is fruitcake a fruit card? Is fruitcake a fruit? Let's see. Does it say fruit? Oh my gosh. Is this the only multi? You're right. And you know what? I guess the fruit synergy. There is synergy in the fruit <laughs> in the fruit section, which is exploding fruit cake conjures your opponent fruit. So this actually matters. The fact it's fruit. So th this might be the only multi. No, it's actually is not a fruit fruit tribe. So never mind. I was thinking that this is going to be the one class that extends to both plants and zombies. But um, 
this does sort of acknowledge what's happening on the other side of the field. So th the fact that you have some really good fruit cards um, actually matters because that is sort of a detriment to fruitcake. Like your opponent can can actually get some decent draws, particularly dark matter dragon fruit. It's amazing how many fruit there are and how often it seems opponents get dark matter dragon fruit from fruitcake. Uh, if obviously if they're just getting you know pear pal and stuff like that. It's pretty garbage. Is this a PayPal pun, by the way? I think I just realized that. But anyway. So it does matter. So how is the Fruit Tribe overall? There's some good cards. There's no synergy. Uh, there's a lot of trash. Oh, fruit sucks. I'm almost thinking that Fruitcake, like... It, fruitcake is way too cheap of a card and needs to cost three and then even from looking at this there's a few problematic things to get from fruitcake but most of all mostly it's giving your opponent something which is very trash or very circumstantial i guess everything's at least useful on some level but not necessarily uh anyway why is everyone spamming that where is fruit synergy gonna go? It it'll it'll go down. It's not as good as the dragon or the brain or the bananas. It'll go down in D tier. Poor fruit. Poor fruit. Alright. Here is the next tribe. It is a zombie tribe, and of course it is the Gargantuar Synergy. Um, okay, so what is the Gargantuar Synergy cards? The main one is this one right over here. You got the Gargologist. This will make your Gargs cost you less. Is this a good idea to make a Gargologist Garg deck? No. It's okay with Rustbolt because then you can at least teleport your Gargologist in, but then you need to teleport a Gargologist and a Garg uh, by turn three, which is extremely unreliable, which is really the reason why, again, Gargologist. Maybe if there was more like cheap cards that enabled your Gargs, maybe this would become a viable strategy, but in the meantime, uh, it's pretty trash. Playing this dry again on turn two is the same problem as with aerobic instructors that usually die. So to build a whole deck around Gargologist and it being a really unreliable card, it just makes the synergy be really crap. Uh, there are a couple other Garg synergy cards, um, which are more subtle. You have the Smashing Garg, which will turn all of them Frenzy, which again, this is not a good card. It just dies so miserably to Shamrock. And besides, we're not really having good stats. And a lot of your Gargs anyway have Frenzy, so it's just very limited in its use. Uh, and then, of course, you have Wizard Gog, which will make all your Gargantuar's Bullseye, which, again, doesn't really matter. They're doing enough damage anyway. They don't really need to... They don't benefit that much from being Bullseye. Bullseye's a lot better when you're pinging your opponent a lot of times. Uh, I guess this is also a Garg's Energy card, because this will make all your Gargantuar's hide in gravestones. Again... Sometimes, if your opponent does not have an answer to this, this will be amazing. It really is too expensive for what it does. Um, it does die really badly to Grave Buster. But anyway. Whew. What are we going to do with the Garg? Okay, so there is some synergy. The overall quality of Gargs in this game, because of how good the removal is on the plant side with Shamrock at Doomshroom, are overall almost unplayable. I mean, these cards are actually really bad. Like, they have a couple good decks for Garg Throne Garg, one good deck for Zombot and Nurse. Mime Garg, you can combine this pretty well with Trickster, but otherwise it's pretty useless. Ugh, gross. Uh, <laughs> again, a lot of these cards are viable. Did just do a Professor Burn deck on Prime Up Gaming with Gas Giant in it. That was okay. There's some okay cards. These, these, these cards are not horrible. And there is some synergy. I, I'm going to give this... A decent grade. I think this can just go in the same tier as like dancing and everything like that. Again, you can build a synergy around it. It's not top tier. The overall quality cards are fine. They're not great. Uh, Garg synergy should just go right into B tier. I think that's fine. All right. And of course, it has what are those. So this, of course, increases it just like a whole run. Otherwise, I probably would have played it in C. Next is Gourmet Synergy. So, no real synergy um, in this class, but there are some cards which sort of tie them together, namely Cheese Cutter. This is actually one of the best cards in the game. Uh, the fact that there, there, there is a little... Okay, there's no synergy really between the Gourmet cards, but the fact that Cheese Cutter conjures Gourmet cards 
considering that it makes those cards cost one less is actually one of the reasons why cheese cutter is so good once you conjure even one gourmet card you're usually fine for the rest of the you're going to have so much more tempo than your opponent it's going to be hard for them to catch up one important thing about gourmet is if you look at the average cost of the cards it's very very low and they're also almost all tempo cards so even though you have some expensive ones like king of the grill a couple four drops they're mostly like nibble if you have a free nibble which you will if you if you conjure it from your cheese cutter so you're going to be able to just having a free nibble will make a trade which is going against your favor go in your favor um same thing really applies to lunchbox same thing applies even to vitamin vitamin z not a very good card but at two this will give you so much tempo on the game early on which again you're going to be stacking that tempo up and really having more stats so tempo means more stats than your opponent this will give you an amount of tempo early in the game that's going to be really hard for your opponent to catch up with. I mean, you have some really, really good cheap cards like Fruitcake, like Hearty Treat, like Sugary Treat. These are all adding a lot of stats to your opponent. Even getting a free egg on turn two is just ridiculous because this will give you an extra guy in the field which your opponent really does not have access to. Bonus attacks. Getting the three cost um, thinking cap is fine. You obviously don't want to get Garg Feast. Typically don't want to get coffee but again in a tempo deck this can be very very good even getting one cost hot dog amp is fine even leftovers which in general is a garbage card at two cost at one cost this is fine uh so there is this little weird gourmet synergy we'll give it some points for that the other of course gourmet synergy who oh, no, knows king of the grill whenever a guard stress a plant conjure a gourmet card i recently tried to even put this in the deck this, this, this is basically an unplayable card it's just not worth it for six but anyway cryo brain uh been having some success with this really very high quality a card trapper territory is a great environment conga's meh this is one of the best cards in the game very solid meh there's some really really high quality gourmet cards and again there is that little bit of of real synergy that sort of ties these together is there anything else that has gourmet i don't know not really uh overall quality of cards is this is actually one of the strongest actually one of the strongest tribes in the game in terms of deck viability really really high tier with the cheese cutter uh not no, no real synergy to think to to think of uh i'm gonna oof. would i put something in a tier just because of its overall quality of cards and its very vague synergy i don't think i can put in the same as bean and flower but i'll put it in b tier which is high it's very solid i put gargs in b too it's definitely better than Garg Synergy, even though, again, Gargs, you can build a deck around this. You can't. Not really. All right, we'll put it in B. Boot. It's definitely better than Bananas and Dragons, that's for sure. That is for certain. All right. Uh, we are actually doing these, for those of you who are looking for a sort of guide um, for this, I'll actually scroll down. We're, we're doing this in alphabetical order, so we're going H, I, J, K. Elemano P. So if you're wondering when it's going to be coming up, that will be the um, that will be the guide. Maybe I'll put that in the description or something of this video so people can actually find things. All right. So we are up to H, which is history. History. Um, not really much synergy to think of, but there are again a couple of cards that tie this uh, tribe together. History actually has very good quality of cards, and that's important uh, mostly because of this one card right over here. The Zombot Dinotrotic Megasaur. Now, this isn't a very good card. It's very expensive. Dies to Shamrocket. We have had some success teleporting this in. You can play this on top of Buried Treasure on turn 7, which, you know, will activate its ability immediately. The only reason why this is viable is just because the overall quality of History Minions... First of all, they're very expensive. That's really the most important thing. Like, if this the History was mostly comprised, like most tribes, of 1s, 2s, and 3s... Uh, Mechasaur would just like, it's such a high risk card and then it doesn't give you that reward of getting strong minions. But, uh, if this is going to be conjuring you very exp it's a very expensive tribe, you know, raw zombie, uh, you get knights, even like a knight as a free card is fine. Um, you always get in the water lane from Mecha, from Mechasaur, you get Mondo Bronto. So even, you know, if you have a few minions on the field, orchestra conductor is, it's okay. I mean, you're getting a lot of value stomping on King. So you have that going on in history, even though, there, again, there's no real synergy between the history cards. The other card that sort of binds this class together is Escape Through Time. This used to be a really decent card at one cost. Unfortunately, aggro 
I guess they felt like it was too strong on the zombie side, so they turned it down to uh, two cost, uh, which is sad. This also conjures you a history card. Not quite as good uh, as the Mechasaur, because the if you factor in the, the tricks and the environments, the cost actually goes down. You have Camel Cross in there all of a sudden, and more Escape Through Time. Uh, so getting a history minion is, is better. Anyway, you have to play it, so the, the, the high cost doesn't really matter for Escape Through Time. All right, so the overall quality of card, there's no real synergy. Overall quality of cards, there's some very good cards. There's some trash. We need a leap. It's so great. There are some really good history cards. I mean, like, really good. Then you got Valk in here. The overall quality of cards are strong. Stomp on's okay. This is okay. Raw Zombie. You have Dr. Space Time, which is one of the better cards in the game. Raptor, one of the better cards. Definitely way above average. So overall quality of cards is really, actually really strong. Not much to say in terms of synergy. I, I'm going to be putting this also in B because, again, it's going to be going along with these classes that have very high quality of cards. Uh, n very little to no synergy, but, again, there is there is that little little tiny bit uh, with the Mechasaur. And now we're going to be moving on to a class that actually does have synergy. Maybe I should put History one rung lower just because there's not really much much synergy going on and the mechasaur is not actually i'm going to be putting history and see doesn't it's not actually quite as good as some of these other classes is garg better than history yeah it probably is <laughs> next we're going to be moving on to imp imp is a class that actually has some synergy um yeah what are the imp synergy cards so it's mostly two cards you got toxic waste imp which again this is a decent card. It's above average. It makes all your guys deadly. There's a lot of really small swarmy imps, uh, which uh, definitely makes the toxic waste imp more viable because you want to just be swarming the field with a lot of these. It'll be benefiting a lot more the more you're able to spam. Uh, the other main synergy card for imps is going to be the imp commander. This will make all your guys draw cards. Same thing. Got a lot of small cards also benefits. I guess this is sort of a half synergy because this will throw only imps. I guess Cosmic Imp for the same price is sort of synergy. Um, imp decks on the highest level of the game are not extremely viable. I would say there was a day back when Tempo was a little bit stronger on the zombie side. Uh, on the plant side, I mean that, you know, having Toxic Waste Imp decks were, were actually really, really good. Spamming a lot of minions get a lot of value out of these deadlies. There's also been a lot more answers added to the game since set one. I'm talking back in set one, really. There's been a lot more answers to the game added to Toxic Waste Imp, like Banana Bomb, which answers it really well. Spirus, Lima Pluridon. There's a lot of, like, one-cost cards to answer this. And then you also have uh, Sweet Pea, which was added to the game, and Hot Date. So, you know, Toxic Waste Imp as the answer. So the whole point of Toxic Waste Imp is being this amphibious guy that the only way you can answer is by putting another card in the amphibious lane. That was like kind of the whole point of Toxic Waste Imp. Uh, other than Berry Blast really didn't have a, a good solid answer. Now that there's a lot of answers, that's one thing that's made Imps a lot worse. I find that when I'm looking for an early game strategy in some decks, leading up to that Pogo mixed up Gravedigger in the Sneaky class, uh, I found that, you know, Flag Zombie, Flag Swarm with Neptuna has been better than Imps. Um, really, uh, when, whenever I'm trying to do Imps again in a, as an early game strat, I find like it really does come a little bit short. The drawing cards also from the Imp Commander, again, this has just mad stats for a three drop and doesn't always survive turn three and then... Also, the block meter plagues. They also, you have to have developed some tempo on the field. Again, there are some good imps. It's a viable strategy. It's actually just not a top tier uh, strategy in this in this game at this point in time. Uh, so there's synergy, but it's not great. What about the overall quality of cards? There's just a lot of met in this class, like a lot of meh, like a lot. We've had a helicopter, a little success with that in gadget scientist decks. A lot of real garbage. <laughs> there's a lot of garbage in the imps. Oh, poor imps. Poor imps. Uh, I guess Imposter technically has imp synergy. Most of the imp cards are garbage. This is very good. But then you have, like, non-existent, just invisible. I don't know what this is. That's always weird. Uh, Walrus Rider. So the overall quality of cards are actually poor. Again, you have some really good ones, like Imp Throwing Imp, which is fine. You can also go... Uh, teleport imps with huge giganticus or super brains to control which actually takes more advantage of the deadly minions again 
We've had some success with that. It's okay. You can also go imps into Bad Moon Rising in that same deck. It's just fine. It's not great. Where are we going to put this? It's certainly not going to be an A because it's not a top tier. It's really at this point in, in, in the game's life, not a top tier synergy. Huh. Is it as viable as dancing? It's probably as viable as dancing and berry. It's probably better than the history and dragon banana. I would say since it does have synergy, there are some good cards. Overall quality of cards are just meh. We'll put it in B tier. Uh, I guess that's where it belongs. That's fair. All right. Next is a uh, plant class that is a little bit sad. I'm going to explain why. This is definitely overrated. It is the leafy class. Uh, so the only leafy, I believe the only, okay, there's two leafy synergy cards. I'll start with the less important one, which is the typical beanstalk. This, if it's played next to a leafy plant, which by the way, this should have been if played in the same lane or next to a Chikondra card, which would make a big difference if you have a team up leafy cards, which there are plenty, like uh, you have Umbrella Leaf or you have Shellery most notably, but anyway. Uh, this will conjure you another leafy card. So it's a three cost, three, three, unreliably draws you a card, meh. The main leafy synergy card, of course, is the Savage Spinach. Now, I was very excited when I saw this, you know, was created in Triassic. This is the most recent set that was created several years ago. It was kind of cool that there's going to be leafy synergy. I'll tell you why Savage Spinach decks are not good. Uh, the reason is, is because it limits your deck to a very specific small amount of cards and you're very often forced to put suboptimal cards um, in the deck together with the Savage Spinach. The Savage Spinach needs that you have leafy cards, but it also requires that you have cheap leafy cards. And when you're looking at, let's say, your one cost leafy cards, you have a couple of good ones like Bong Choy, but it's mostly garbage. This is not really a good, it's below average. Uh, you also have Umbrella Leaf, which again is a below average card. It's a very easy card to answer, unfortunately. This is probably a slightly above average card, so this is okay. But then you have, again, you have Lily Pad. And of course, this is, as a leafy card does not synergize at all uh, because it cannot be evolved with the Savage Spinach. So you have just these really limited options. If you're relying on putting your Savage Spinach and evolving it, leafy synergy, onto a two or more cost card you've lost so much value from that that giving the remaining plants like maybe you'll have one other plant on the field and the plants in your hand who knows how many you're going to have at that point it really just does not make it worth it even though you're getting a four cost five six in the field I, again this is okay i really like this deck uh we did leaf we did the leafy synergy combined with um onion rings with green shadow that was one of the first triassic decks uh, I made and that still actually does pretty well to this day because the whole point was Onion Rings, uh, which is a Megaro card, sort of makes your little meh one drops that you otherwise don't want to run in a deck like Party Time. Okay, now at least after you play Onion Rings, these are going to be 4 4. So it just makes it, makes them fine. Um, so that's the reason why Leafy Synergy exists, but it's really not good. You have several good cards in this deck, in this tribe. You have Sham Rocket, actually one of the best cards in the game, even though I hate it. Um, you have some good ones, you have a lot of crap, <laughs> a couple good ones, and then you just end up, for every good card, you usually have just three garbage ones, this is not a good card, really, really not, ugh, Muscle Sprout, it's just okay, garbage, garbage, huge pile of garbage, I mean, <laughs> this is one of the, this is one of the garbagists class, so you, again, you have limited options, and then you also have just a lot of below average cards, if the leafy cards were really good. Imagine this just had ridiculous stats, Cabbage Pull, and the, the, the cards were just like very reliable. Then all of a sudden Leafy Synergy would be a thing because being limited to Leafy cards would not be such a big disadvantage. Uh, also just a few more ones in different classes, maybe other than Megagro would be super nice for Savage Spinach. Maybe someday. All right, so it has Synergy. The Synergy is quite bad. The overall quality of cards is quite bad. Ugh. This is going in C or D. I'm really, I'm just looking more. We have just Sage Sage, just, uh, Leaf Blower, <laughs> we have Stonks. I think because of the overall quality, it, it's almost an unviable strategy and the overall quality of cards in this cl class are just meh. I wonder if I should give it one extra point just because there is one good Savage Spinach deck, which by the way, I, it could be better without the Savage Spinach. 
Uh, I'm putting it in D tier. Sad, Leafy. Very sad. All right, next we're going to, oh, so there is, okay, this is why everyone was spamming mime. I was thinking, what is the class that has a member in both the plants and the zombies? And of course, it is the almighty mime synergy. We'll type this on it. You got two mime cards, and they, even though one's a plant and one's a zombie, they uh, ironically do synergize together very, very little. Gargantuar Mime, so this card is mostly just good in Trickster Mime decks. If you haven't seen those, I'm pretty sure those are old enough to be on the original Frying Up channel. Those are actually really good, and I need to bring those back at some point, because that's actually one of the saltiest decks in the game. Uh, if you have Gargantuar Mime on the field and you play Mustache Monument Trickster, those 22 damage your opponent's face, do the math, it's amazing. Uh, the other Mime card is on the plant side. It is the uh, Imitator. We'll pull it up. <laughs> so the mime garg says whenever a non mime does a bonus attack then mime garg itself will do a bonus attack now the main reason why they made it that way uh is just so you won't have this loop between you know if you have two mime gargs on the field that would just be broken uh if you know this mime guard would see the other one do a bonus attack and then it would keep on going back and forth they didn't like that <laughs> they don't want that happening it's too broken so uh, that's the reason why a non-mime plant or zombie uh, does the bonus attack. I've actually never seen a... I don't know if I've ever seen an Imitator do a bonus attack ever. Forget about that Mime Garg was on the field. I don't think Imitator I've ever seen. I'm not sure. I don't even know what its attack animation is. Like, I'm joking, but... Yeah, Mime Synergy. <laughs> mime Garg's not even a good card. Ah. Uh. Where are we going to put this? I'm not going to exactly put an F because its quality of cards are actually above average. I mean, they're they're not good, but they're not the worst. Should I put this in F or D? Huh. huh. <laughs> I'll put it in D. It's anti-synergy. Anyway, I should put it in Clock Tribe. Okay. All right. All right, next, uh, we are going to move on to a um, oh, weird class. It is the monster class. Now, there is going to be something, monster tribe. There is going to be something cool about this tribe. There's really no synergy within this tribe. Also, the overall quality of cards, what is this? Thank you, CO. Non-mime has members on both sides, too. Non-mime? <laughs> what? That's not a tribe because it's not a it's not in the card. Yeah, hear what you're saying though. All right, this one's a little complicated. There's no actual synergy, as you can see, between the monster tribe. The overall quality of cards is crap. There's a lot. Of, again, we had a highlight recently. Uh, this is actually in the audition video for the uh, for the video editors. Where a haunting go, where you know haunting goes into the being a really good draw uh, from haunted pumpkin is really where this is gonna matter. But most of these cards are just big crap. You don't want to be conjuring uh, monster cards. And again, the time that that makes a difference is when you go to the other side. If we'll just type in monster here, which has an S in it, coincidentally. Uh, th this is when this tribe actually matters. Now, haunted pumpkin. <laughs> Haunted Pumpkin is but is like one of the best cards in this game. Might be the best card in the game. One cost 4-2. It's just ridiculous. This needs a nerf. And its only drawback is that it conjures your opponent a card. Now, if this would conjure your opponent a random card, or even worse, it would draw them a card, that would actually be a pretty severe liability. But it only conjures your opponent monsters, and monsters are trash. So it turns out that the liability up Haunted Pumpkin it is so outweighed by its stats and its viability that it's really not much of a liability at all. Again, every once in a while, if your opponent gets a con man, I, I would say Alley News is probably overall the best card to conjure uh, when your opponent plays Haunted Pumpkin because uh, they're playing aggro. Haunted Pumpkin is an aggro card. You want control cards, and Alley News can sometimes take out one of their finishers uh, or one of their strong cards. It, it, it just becomes a viable 
card but otherwise you're getting garbage i mean every once in a while maybe you can clear their field this has happened where you have haunted pumpkin then gizzard lizard just completely destroys their field but you need to have another minion on the field it is circumstantial and of course it doesn't control whatever they play that turn only controls the turns before which is pretty bad way to play against aggro in general again every once in a while this can help you control monster mesh this 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 this, this is really really trash the only top t actual top tier card in this is quick draw con man uh, and again, and it matters that it's trash. I'm going to be putting Monster in F tier uh, just to make a point in how great Haunted Pumpkin is, that it's liability. It's not like Exploding Fruitcake that at least has some really, really good cards. This has two good cards in it, and they're not necessarily even that good in the situation of playing against a Haunted Pumpkin deck. Uh, Monster is really, really trash, and it matters. That's the point. The point is that it matters. Con Man doesn't even answer Pumpkin. That's that's the thing. Like, if Con Man was a good card and it somehow was good against the Haunted Pumpkin deck, it's actually pretty weak against the Haunted Pumpkin deck. But anyway. All right. The, the next one is um, <laughs> Moss Synergy on the plant side. That's what we got. <laughs> this is a Moss? It's a spore, so it's a mod. I didn't even know. If you would have asked me which tribe is I spore, I'd have been like, I don't know. All right, so then you got Cosmos. <laughs> and then you got Repeat Moss. So obviously there's no synergy. Repeat Moss is good with one hero, Captain Combustible. I I'm not going to say I spore is a horrible card. It's an okay removal, unreliable again, because you need to have an empty lane in order to activate it. And Cosmos is just meh. Poor Moss synergy. So there's no synergy. Overall quality cards are actually below average. Even though I gave this, I don't remember what I gave. I probably give this a B because it's only good in one deck. Uh, all right, we're putting that in F. Moss synergy sucks. Next, next is a plant synergy, and of course it is mushroom. This is one of the um, kind of like prototypical tribes in this game. Even though there's actually not a whole lot of synergy happening here, it's three synergy cards. One of them, you got Buff Shroom, which will buff all your mushrooms by 1-1. One, one. This card looks like a good idea, but it's not. Actually, very poor stats for a 2-drop, and then it, you really need to have a Shroom for 2 or a Puff Shroom for this to be good, and then buffing cards by 1-1, one, one, it's really... <laughs> you need, like, several of these uh, for Buff Shroom to work. I, I would say overall, I'm going to say mushrooms really don't... aren't a very good tribe to build synergy around. They'll go through the other ones, which is Punish Shroom. Two damage to a random, so it's again three cost two two. Very easy card to answer. Can get a lot of value if they don't have an answer to it. Again, it's below average card, but it's fine. And then you have Gloom Shroom, which needs to evolve from a mushroom, uh, and then ends up being a very decent field clear slash very powerful bullseye. Very 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 strong card. Um, so one thing I'm gonna say again, uh, mushroom decks were actually used to be very very good back in like early set one. The block meter used to have ten charges. I mean, you have to be around this game since 2016 to remember that day. I wonder if that was even pre-release. That was only in beta. It had ten charges, but uh, they reduced it down. Of course, the block meter now has eight, which has made mushroom decks like swarming a lot of non-bullseye plants. It's made it a lot worse. Usually, the way you want to be playing swarm. Is more of a bullseye strategy, which again, you have basically one bullseye mushroom, um, which is swarmy. Uh, but that's basically it. So mushroom decks are not very good. Uh, I guess this technically is a mushroom synergy card too, because it's a mushroom which creates a mushroom. Okay. Uh, I guess for that price, Astro Shroom will also be the same thing. So again, you can make mushroom decks. They're fine. The most mostly mushroom decks you just cut out buff shroom and put in pine clone it's so much better turns you guys are reliably into three threes instead of two twos which is just all the difference in this game uh overall quality of cards are fine you have some good cards you have some meh you have some very good cards meh very good ugh, ugh, ugh. mostly ugh, kind of ugh. average 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 pretty meh all these are pretty meh so I would say a below average quality of cards has synergy, but below average synergy. It's viable, but you really shouldn't be doing it. Hmm, where do we put you? Where do we put you? Uh, just to make a point, this really could end up with B. It's probably actually exactly the same as Imps. <laughs> it really is. Um, 
I'm going to be putting, well, do you have Gloomshroom, which is fine. I've had success with Gloomshroom. I would almost put this in C just to make a point to budget players. People don't really understand this game. Just make too many Mushroom decks and they think, they're think they like wondering why it doesn't work. It really is very poor synergy. But because you do have Gloomshroom, which is fine, I usually don't regret running that. And you have a couple of good cards. It, it's basically the same as Imps. I'll, I'll put it in B. It really is exactly the same. It works, but it's not worth it. Next. Next. I don't know why people are spamming random names of tribes at me. We're going to get to them, guys. They're all here. Don't worry. We have like 12 more tribes left. Keep it going. Uh, next is going to be a, a very interesting tribe with very little synergy, but uh, one of actually my favorite tribes. This is the Mustache Tribe. So the Mustache Tribe has two synergy cards. The main one is Mustache Waxer. This will give you one more brain every single time you play a Mustache card. So this, and it also gives us extra health. So it makes this engine, this thing that's giving you a lot of value, sort of self-sustain on the field, which is very important for engine cards. You don't want them to be dying. The second synergy card, which is just met, of course, is the Duck Stash, which again, every once in a while, evolving this on a low cost guy instead of this, you know, this will get 2-2. It dies to Shamrocket, but you know, when you evolve it. This also draws you cards. It's kind of cool. Gives you more mustaches to help your mustache waxer. So cool little synergy there. All right. Now, so what's with the, what's with mustache uh, waxer? The problem with mustache waxer, honestly, is that there are not enough cheap mustaches in the game. The only way you can't be playing this, like if you have mustache wax in the field and you play, you know, it's turn three and you play a three cost mustache, Okay, so you get three, now you have one extra brain, you're not necessarily gonna have anything in your hand to even spend that one brain. So what you really need for Mustache Waxer to work is having a lot of one cost mustaches. And then you can sort of do like a flag zombie strat where you play Mustache Waxer on two, then you play another Mustache Waxer, and then you play another one cost card, it gives you a couple brains, then you play some tricks. Um, the only hero I've really found Mustache Waxer to work with is Professor Brainstorm. Uh, and the reason is because you have um, cheap mustaches, which are viable. Grave Robber is really the, the main minion uh, that you can run this with. But more importantly, you have Bungie Plumber, which is a trick. It's actually, no, it's a very, very good trick. Um, it's also just, uh, it's, it's not only a way to spend the extra brain that you got from Mustache Waxer, but of course it also synergizes in itself. But the other card that really works with Brainstorm, again, these are all crazy cards, is the Quasar, because if you play this, usually... You, this will be three cost, you know, to play the superpower, two for the Quasar one. Now this makes it two cost. So if, if you play Mustache Waxer on one, you can go Quasar superpower on two. I would not suggest that because usually your Mustache Waxer will die before you get the value. Uh, better to make a Mustache Waxer combo with Grave Robbers on two uh, and then play your Quasar, let's say, on three. It just gives you a lot more options. Uh, you can play, let's say, another two cost card after you play the Quasar and still maybe have room uh, to play your superpower, which is really, really cool. Now, uh, Mustache, it would be nice if it worked with a Morticia with Cheese Cutter. The problem is, again, you just have two one-cost Mustache cards. You don't have your Bungie Plumbers. Um, you don't have, you know, the, the Dance-Off power, which Brainstorm has, which will actually uh, give you a little bit of that Mustache synergy that you need. Uh, and Morticia, of course, doesn't have any of that. The overall quality of Mustache cards are pretty bad i mean you have like a lot of trash you have some good cards but then you have for every good card again you have some trash these are decent headstone cover i haven't really found a way to get headstone cover and mustache waxer together just okay below average actually are some good cards even though again they don't work in must it's like if you're looking at the overall quality of cards they're good but they don't really work in necessarily a mustache deck the only because the only hero that really again in my experience has worked is the professor brainstorm mustache deck which by the way is a very underrated deck you should definitely check that out. it's very very fun and extremely powerful it's actually one of the best aggro decks in the game um we have uh you know mustache monument you can play this and then if you're missing brains mustache monument let's say into um Shield Crusher, like instead of this costing eight, you can now do it on turn seven if you have even one Mustache Waxer on the field, which is cool. That's the finisher in that deck. All right, so it has a viable synergy for basically one deck in the game. 
All right, the chat is pointing out that there is this uh, other little synergy card over here, Imposter, because it conjures a mustache. This mustache actually makes a difference because if you play this imp that has the mustache, uh, while well, you have Mustache Waxer in the field, it actually will proc it. I think originally when Imposter came out, or when Mustache Waxer came out, it didn't work, but then they made it work. They kind of patched that in. All right, so the Mustache class has, again, kind of one viable deck. The overall quality of cards are actually okay. Like, there's there's a lot of treasure. You have, like, a lot of really good cards that just have the Mustache. These are not very good. But then you have some of the best cards in the game in this class. I mean, Grave Robber is fine. Bungie Clone is the best card in the game. This is fine. Quasars are good cards. This is just okay, man. Mix up Gravedigger, one of the best cards in the game. It's like some really decent, really very high quality. Even Sports Coach, I mean, it's in the tribe. It doesn't have synergy, but it is in the tribe. So I, maybe I'll, I should be giving this a little more, uh, a little more just for the, just for the, the value, man. And you know what? Even though there's really only one deck that has mustache synergy, it is, in my opinion, a top tier deck. It actually is a very, very strong. Again, it's one of the most unknown, like, of the decks that I've done in this. In you know that, that it performs so well and are so powerful, and it seems like nobody knows about. It. I never see people run that Professor Mustache deck. It's so fun too. It's really one of my one of my favorite decks in the game. I think I'm actually going to be putting Mustache in A. Just because it contains, again, the tribe contains some of the best zombie cards in the game. And even though it doesn't, it has the same amount of synergy, let's say, as Gargs, which only work in one deck, dancing. But this, the, the one time it does work, it really does better than, than, a, than Imp Synergy or Shroom Synergy. It really does have one application in the game, which is very, very good. Um, so <laughs> this feels like a little bit maybe overrating it, but it actually is very viable and again, a very overall, some really, really, really powerful cards, which happen to be mustaches, which is cool. I guess maybe overall, I'm just thinking because of how high quality the cards are, some of the cards are in this tribe, is really makes Duck Stash better. Since this is conjuring you mustaches, uh, that tribe being having a lot of really strong cards actually makes Duck Stash a little better, which again, we do run in that Mustache Synergy deck as well. All right. We're moving on to one of the prototypical tribes in this <laughs> in this game. And unfortunately, it's very overrated. Uh, it is the Nut Tribe for the plants. Now, there's uh, plenty of nuts in this game. Okay, so what are the Nut Synergy cards? For a tribe with... <laughs> <laughs> is there really a lot of synergy? There's really just two synergy cards, huh? We got Mirror Nut, which again, I explained in the Guardian tier list why this is a mistake. This needs to have Bullseye. It could have less health. It's just pinging your opponent for such a late game card that has too many answers like Deadly and Weed Spray and all these things. And then it's just not, it makes you win so slowly and you have to build an entire deck around in order for it to be good. Not a good card. And then you have the other Nut synergy, it's going to be Smackadamia, which again, just for a five cost card, it just does not do enough. I can almost see if this your nuts got four health, that maybe then that would create this to be viable. It wouldn't even be the greatest card ever, but I feel like that could maybe make Smackadamia at least decent. Maybe give it itself a little bit less base health, so it won't be a 4-8 when you play it on the field. Maybe it should be. But anyway, uh, I guess you got Loco Coco also has nut synergy because this is nut evolution. Yeah, so this is not definitely a third nut synergy card, which again is not a good idea. I explained this also in the Guardian tier. This is not, you don't want to be building an entire nut deck in order to unreliably give your nuts three attack on turn six. It's just too late. Run Pine Clone for crying out loud. So it has synergy. It's not worth ever making a nut synergy deck. Now, what about the overall quality of cards? There are some very good nuts. I mean, you got Forget Me Nuts. Juggernaut is fine. Health Nut, Picanolith is one of the best cards in the game. Primal, fine. Again, there are some crap. I don't think Mirror Nut's a very good card. It's actually a lot of crap in this, in this class as well. Vi not really viable, really crap. Wing Nut, one of the better cards in the game. So there's several good cards. Walnut Bowling's also okay as a finisher. So you have several good cards. Most of the tribe is crap. It does contain some of the better cards in this game, though. The synergy, even though it exists, is almost non-existent in terms of its practical applications. 
Uh, nuts are definitely not worth it. That's all I have to say. And no, I do not have any communication with EA. I never really have. There was one unfortunate uh, guy who was in charge of that who, yeah, didn't, wasn't very good at communicating. But anyway, where's Nut Synergy going to go? <laughs> I would say because there are several good cards and there is some Synergy, which almost never works. I'll, I'll just put this in C tier. That's probably where it belongs. I could even put it in D. Uh, I think C will be fine. Next. Okay. All right. So some people are telling me, I'm just looking at the chat. There's some people complaining that goat, is there a goat tribe? No, this is a pet. See, the things we're counting as tribes in this are, are these little keywords over here. It's a pet zombie. It's a dancing. It's a, so even though there is again, goat synergy between these two cards, <laughs> this is much more referring this goat when any kind of goat, this is referring to the name of the card, not the tribes. So that's the reason it didn't come onto this tier list, even though goat synergy is pretty strong. I almost would put that in A tier. So maybe we'll, I don't have an icon for it set up right now. Didn't come that prepared, but uh, we can, we can uh, orally determine that uh, <laughs> goats would have been in A tier uh, if it had been included. All right, gotta keep it, keep it going here. This, this tier list is taking longer than I thought. Next is a zombie uh, tribe, which is very weird and has no synergy. It is the party. <laughs> Why they did this? <laughs> Look, mommy, it's party synergy. <laughs> there's, there's no synergy, right? There's no card that says that it determines anything from party, but you do have surprise guard. You have trickster. Okay, so there's no synergy to think of. What about the overall quality of cards? There are, again, several good cards. The best one uh, has got to be trickster one of the better cards in the game wow it's fruitcake also damn this has some strong cards in it so top tier cards surprise garg is good and it gets out class by mug of course but this, this is actually it's this is actually probably the it might be the best garg <laughs> it's just outclassed by mug so badly that's why it doesn't get a lot of use decent crap 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 yeah okay crap Eh. Paparazzi's a party? Why? Do you even know what a paparazzi is? Oh my gosh. So there's a few good cards and a lot of <laughs> crap and absolutely no synergy. On life's okay. It's a freaking photographer. Party synergy is going in F tier. I don't care if it has trickster in it. It's very, very sad. Should I put in D? I guess I'll put in D because it does have trickster and fruitcake and unlife backyard bounce surprise. Eh, there's enough good card. There's enough decent cards to put it in D. Uh, we'll save F for like the, <laughs> for the, for the tribes with nothing good in it, like moss and monster and fly chap. Ew, gross. All right. Next one of the might be the most uh, prototypical tribe in the entire game. And that's the reason the reason is because this actually had synergy back in the original PVZ1. I don't, I don't remember if there was a tribe that had synergy. Uh, and that is just because of Torchwood would make all of your P's do double damage. Now it makes um, you guys do two extra attack. All right, guys. I want to be really clear about the P tribe. The good thing to do with P synergy is Gatling P. The bad thing that you should never do, even though it looks like it's, it has a lot of really good synergy, Stop making Podfather decks. <laughs> it's not even going up on the screen. That's how bad it is. This is the like the main P synergy card, quote unquote, but this is not worth it. It's a three cost two, two. Does not get any value with the turn you play it. Uh, if you play it on three, if you play it on four, maybe if you have a one cost P in your hand, you'll get an extra two, two from this. <sighs> so circumstantial, not worth it. Every once in a while, again, you'll say, Fry, what about that one time they had Podfighter and you didn't have any Rolling Stones or Bungie Plumbers or Field Clear or really any answers and they had a team up so you weren't able to play Beam Me Up against this. Like, every once in a while, you'll see Podfather take over a game, but in general, it's not a good idea. Gatling P, on the other hand, which does have P synergy, you need a few, you don't need a lot. You'd actually, you don't need a lot of cheap Ps, you just need a few to activate the Gatling P, which anyway, by itself is a very good card. This is actually one of the best cards in the game. Every time, 
every time we do a Gatling P deck, this card just carries us to victories. Uh, absolutely freaking amazing. So, yeah, that's uh, going to give the P, the P tribe a lot of extra points in terms of that synergy. Again, the other difference is, too, is that Podfather, in order for this to be viable, basically your whole deck has to be Ps, which makes it very limited in terms of the amount of decks that you can put this in, as opposed to Gatling P, because, again, you need to be activating this two, three times in order for it to work. You have to have Podfather plus those cards, basically an entire deck worth of Ps. If you have three different Ps in your decks, you have 12 early game Ps, that's enough for Galling P. And there are plenty of good early games just to be running a few uh, in these aggro decks, uh, like the aggro Galling P's we've been running. Uh, even like Sting Bean is very good with Grass Knuckles, but you have uh, you have Click B, even Black Eyed P. You have just a lot of things. Even playing this, covering this with the Galling P for a free five damage is sometimes a really, really good move. All right, so what's that's the synergy. The synergy is actually really good. I mean, this is actually one of the better one of the better synergies in terms of top tier viability in the game so what should we are uh what should we oh let's look at the overall quality of cards so again there is some this is below average meh this is actually not a p it's just a pair so the game got really confused bad this is also a pair <laughs> it's including all the pairs get these pairs out of here no one likes these pairs none of these these are all just pairs uh and this one too the overall quality of cards, again, so you have Gatling P, which is one of the better cards in the game, Black Eyed P, Click P, these are the good ones, Split P's fine, Potfather works, again, Torchwood is typically not very good in this game, the only thing I really have gotten this to work well with is Potfighter, every once in a while you can do this together with Gatling P, makes the bonus attack do 7 instead of 5, which is very cool, uh, Repeat Moss is also not a P, it just has the word P in it, most of the P cards are kind of meh, like, okay, bad, bad, very bad, extremely bad, horrible, oh my gosh, I'm gonna buy, okay, this is like fine, this is not a good card anymore, this was maybe good back in set one, really got power crept very, very hardly, very harshly, snow pee, really, really, really crap, wing nuts a good card, this is a pee, this is gonna be tough, this is a really, really tough one for me, if, if the quality of cards in the P tribe we're better. I, I might even put this in S tier. I'm serious in terms of how good get and it just and and delete Podfather from the game so no one actually thinks this is a good idea. I'm so afraid of putting this in a high tier because someone's gonna look at this tier list and say, "See, Fry said that Podfather is a good 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 so you should make peace energy decks." It's not. So stop saying that <laughs> and stop making P decks. On the other hand, the synergy that is contained, the one good synergy is one of the better ones in the game. There's plenty of good cards to go around. I mean, there's not, even though you have a lot of crap, you don't, just don't run it. You have a lot of really top tier cards in this, in this, in this, uh, really, really good in this tribe. Um, I'm going to stick the solid lean A. It really actually is one of the better synergies in terms of tribe synergy in this game, in terms of just getting it done. If you have any doubts in why I'm doing this, just look, just type the words Frime Up Gatling into YouTube and just skip to the end of the video and see what the records were with these decks. I, I, this might be the most 10 and 0, like of cards I've ran and gotten 10 and 0. I don't know. Gatling P might just be that other than like Valk or something. But anyway... Absolutely amazing. What would make this better? Make this into a 3-3. Three, three. It would survive better, not be a liability if it gets answered. That that that's I I don't think this would be overpowered. And it would actually open up the P tribe as a class again if this would just be a three class three three. It has to be self-sufficient. But anyway. Moving right along. Alright, so we're going to one of the more OG original gangsta tribes in this game and that is the pet synergy so there's really i believe two pet synergy cards there's the good one which is cat lady this is for a one cost card just does obscene amount of damage if you can combo this correctly with enough pets if you want to see the best example of that look at the immortitia otk cat lady otherwise known as the salty cat deck that deck was ridiculous it actually is probably the only top tier pet synergy deck the bad pet synergy card is Zookeeper. Now, this is still better than Podfather <laughs> because it's basically a Podfather that costs two, essentially. 
Uh, but again, even a 2 cost 2-2, two, two, to be building an entire deck around Zookeeper and it being a dry zombie, which is so easy to remove, it just dies to everything on turn 2. Basically on turn 3, it dies to a lot of things as well. Um, yeah. It, this is this is not, not a very good card to be building a deck around. I know for budget players, you can get to rank 20 or 25 with your Zookeeper decks, but in general, it's not a good idea. Uh, the main pet synergy card is going to be the Cat Lady. The way we, again, use the Cat Lady in the synergy, you teleport, you use your Morticia, teleport in your Cat Lady. You got to draw a lot of lunch boxes. It's right running your Yetis. You're running a lot of card draw on that deck. You're going to play a whole bunch of lunch boxes onto your Cat Lady. Each one will actually buff the Cat Lady by four attack. Teleport any other minions on your on the field. Play your Morticia Bats, which buffs the Cat Lady twice because it's a pet trick, which also is a pet minion. Uh, and then your Cat Lady, just use bonus attacks and just kill them all in turn with your Cat Lady. That's actually a very good deck. I would say even a top tier deck because it's actually very effective. Uh, otherwise, okay, so let's look at the overall. Again, so the synergy is good in one deck with one hero. It does work very well. Uh, Zookeeper, again, it's viable for maybe the most budget players on the lower level of the game. High level of the game, Zookeeper really has almost no practical applications. All right, so let's look at the overall quality uh, of cards in the pet tribe. So again, you have some good ones. Goats are good. Again, sorry I didn't put goat tribe. It's not actually a real tribe. You have some meh, meh. It's just fine. Horrible, ugh, gross, disgusting, wretched. I'm gonna vomit immediately. Horrible, more like slocus or Jeez, there are some really bad. I mean, even these are like some of the better ones. They're not that good. <gasps> it has clock in it. I think the cuckoo has like a little, there's like a little bird in here when he attacks. Man, pets suck. Pets really suck. Okay, the sneaky pets are good. No, only several of them are good. Hmm. Anyway, so it's good for one, it's good for one deck. Overall quality of cards suck. Is it the same as P? How it's, well, it's, see, you know what? OTK Cat Lady is not as good as Gatling. And Gatling is also good with several heroes. It's not just good with the one. It works with Green Shadow. It works with Grass Knuckles for sure. Pet is just meh. I, I can't put this too low, so I guess I'll put this in B. Does this even fit on the tier list? Sort of. Sort of. Can I even shrink this more? Oh no. Is this what it's coming to? Are these our options? Alright, it fits, guys. Don't even worry about it. It freaking fits. We need a fit. There. There. Okay, it just means we can't put anything else in B for the rest of the game, but this will be fine. <laughs> this is fine. There. We fit! Just barely! Next! Next is the almighty <laughs> pine pine cone. Oh, I guess we have to not get pineapple in there, so I'll type the whole pine cone in. Jeez, I didn't think that would mess up. All right, guys, we got pine cone synergy. Now, there's actually no pine cone synergy, but in the pine cone tribe, you literally have <laughs> two of the best cards in the game. You got pine clone and sham rocket. Are you kidding me? And then you have this trash. Ugh. Man, overall quality of cards, top, top tier. Very small, so we'll take off some points. No synergy, so we'll take off some points. Pine cones are good. I can't put this lower than animal, so I guess we're just putting this in B tier. How am I going to fit onto the screen? <laughs> it looks like Flytrap just fell off the bottom, but that's fine. This is okay. I wasn't anticipating having an entire tier just for clock synergy. All right, I guess this is our tier list now. Fine, I'll make it smaller. Just do this, Fry. Stop being lazy. Stop being freaking lazy, Fry. There. It fits. It is so good. <laughs> There's so much B in this. <laughs> uh, and then we can do this one again. All right, now it's beautiful. B stands for beautiful. There. Uh, we're going to move on to the pirate tribe. Oh, pirates. Pirates is a, an extremely, extremely good tribe. 
Um, as you guys all, I'm sure, all know, pirate decks are actually one of the best decks in the entire game. Now, there's, I guess, only two synergy cards, which is Swashbuckler. This is such a good card. Uh, just the fact that this buffs all of your pirates whenever they grow. I mean, this thing just hits face once. It's already out of control for a two-cost 3-3 three, three if they don't answer it. And, of course, the thing which really made, which was created after that really made pirates it back into a tribe is Captain... Flame phase. This will give all of your cards strike through. So you're always running some like aggro tempo pirate deck. You're doing a lot of damage to your opponent's face. You're growing your minions and giving everything strike through. This is essentially like a going viral minion uh, in terms of how it activates all of your cards. You usually want your flame face all the way to the right. So before it dies, the rest of your cards still have strike through. These two cards actually synergize even better together because the more strike through you have, the more likely your pirates are going to be hitting your face and then the swashbuckler will grow them. So uh, I guess there is one more pirate synergy card and it's instead, instead is so good. Guys, look at this. This is, in, look at just the word instead makes this card completely OP. I mean, this is amazing. Not really, but you know what I'm saying? I think the memes definitely give it one extra point. Okay. Uh, so as you all know, the best, let's talk a little bit more about the synergy. The best pirate deck is going to be infinity pirate because you have two one cost pirates, which are just ridiculous con man, which anyway is one of the best aggro cards in the game. And now this together with swashbuckler, this, if this starts growing, this hits face twice per turn, even if this grows one time to a two, four bullseye, this is just, it's so hard to come back. And this actually works, has double synergy with swashbuckler and flame face. Not only is a pirate, but it also grows and does more attack. Uh, when you play a gravestone, making this bullseye to even a bullseye three two with flame face is just so good for a one cost card. Bullseye strike through three two for one cost, absolutely ridiculous. Uh, so there's that. Overall quality of cards is also really really good. Again, you got your you got your pirates with the um, with the quick draw comment and the grave robber i guess the the other pirate synergy card which sort of makes a difference that the overall quality of pirates are pretty good is on about plank walker this will create two more pirates so that makes it matter that this is a relatively strong tribe of course you have swabby and you have some other <laughs> trash <sighs> everyone unsubscribe um Pirates booty, <laughs> but you can't get this from Plank Walker, so it's fine. Uh, you do have some really, really strong cards that were added later in the game, much later in Triassic, like Guard Throwing Guard, uh, Warlord was added later, Gondola, uh, which really, you know, make the have made Plank Walker actually, on average, do a lot more. You have like really strong cards like Bounty Hunter, which we're typically not using in pirate decks. Uh, but we did do even hardy pirates with Neptuna, and Intergalactic Warlord was not only good synergy with that aggro tempo deck, it also is a pirate itself, so that doesn't hurt. You have um, Monkey Pirate. This is just perfect in terms of a sort of grave-themed pirate deck. It also helps with your aggro because it steals your opponent's block meter. Really, overall, very high quality of cards. There's a couple cards which are meh, but this is really one of the best synergy cards in the game. And I'll, I'll tell you the difference between pirates and, let's say, beans or flowers or mustaches. Is that if you build, let's say the difference between pirates and flowers. If you build your entire deck just based on your pirate synergy and you build the whole thing around that, that ends up being a top tier deck in the game. If you're building a deck that is completely revolving around flowers or just beans and really doesn't have anything else like bounce, like anything else that's actually helping it, it's not a top tier deck in the game. Even the main bean deck, let's say you can combine it with Astro Shroom and Cycle Cat. Uh, pirates not only have very high quality cards, best synergy in the one of the best synergies in the game. It will it, the synergy is the is the carry. Uh, and for that reason, this is the first one that we are going to be putting right in S tier. Easy S tier for me. Uh, this is probably going to be the easiest one uh, just in terms of uh, just completely really, really high quality pirate decks. That's all you need to know. Uh, with other heroes, by the way, besides for Infinity, since you don't have the one drops, you can run Headstone Carver and then you have a lot of uh, plenty of gravestones in your pirate uh, class that will benefit from that Headstone Carver. Just want to point that out. But anyway absolutely amazing uh the next one is a very weird very very weird um class uh, and that is the professional i'll just type the whole word just so the game doesn't get profession profession all right 
It's the professional synergy. <laughs> okay, so what are the professional synergy cards? There's basically two. You have Zombie Middle Manager, which I feel like the value of this card in the game, the reason this is an okay card is because it conjures you something, a very cheap way of conjuring. So it activates Stompadon, it activates your Dino Roars. It's a card which can grow to be a threat, but really doesn't give you card disadvantage from playing it because you're always going to get something from it. Uh, not necessarily because of its of its um, it professional synergy, because again, this card, it doesn't grow that much from your professional. It's very easy to remove, and it just doesn't really uh, do, you can't really build a deck around it. And you'd in order to get really get the professional synergy out of this, you'd have to, uh, you would have to build a deck around this. So there, of course, uh, professional synergy card is Jurassic Fossil Head. Again, this is okay. This is not a bad card. Um, you do need even a two cost two three untrickable. That's just kind of meh. The untrickable doesn't help. It's really once you uh, evolve this onto something else uh, that really this get makes it worth it. Now it's a four five uh, untrickable, which is very very by the way very cheap at two cost. Really, you've spent at least three because you had to play the original minion the turn before. It also does take away some stats on the field. It also is unreliable because you need to have. You know, in order to play this on two, you need to have a one-cost professional on turn one, but you also need that professional to survive, which will really will not necessarily, like, which professional reliably survives on turn one? I guess just Gladiator, but everything else, you're going to play Teacher. These are, they're going to be very easily removed, and actually, most of the cases make very good trades uh, against them. So, professional synergy, again, it works every once in a while, especially since this, you know, naturally has built in professional synergy. Even if you have no other professionals in your deck, this always conjures you another professional. So it, it, it helps. It's kind of just like a little bit of a support every once in a while you run fossil on the deck, but you definitely don't want to be building uh, professional synergy decks. Uh, so the synergy is there. It exists. It's kind of more useful than than even running a deck based around it because it has naturally built into this card, which is okay. But it's kind of like really not there. Uh, what's the overall quality of cards in the professional class? And you know, this is one reason why this becomes middle manager becomes worse because overall quality of professional cards. There are some very good ones, but there's a lot of trash. I mean, you got a lot of garbage. Bungie Plumber is one of the best things you can get uh, by far. Teacher is just okay. Flag Zombie in the wrong deck, in the right deck, Flag Zombie's good, but in the wrong deck, if you conjure this from your middle manager, it's not good. And then you got Bucket Boy, and you got more Bucket Boys, and just really, really trash. You have Mixed Up Grave Digger, so that, again, every once in a while, even in the wrong deck, Mixed Up Grave Digger can be really, really good. It, most of this is trash, though. Again, Secret Agent is good in one type of deck, Secret Swimmer. If you're not running Swimmer in your deck, what are you doing with Secret Agent? It's usually just going to be a liability. Most of the cards in this tribe really are, are below at Most of the cards are below average, even though you have then a couple of the best cards in the game that happen to be, just so happen to be professionals. Where are we going to put, okay, so professional synergy, I would say the the the... The synergy itself, the value of the synergy does not matter. The overall quality of the cards are really crap. I would say because it exists and because there are a couple of good cards in this class, uh, I'm going to put this in C tier. Uh, really not much to say about the professional again as a tribe, just because, I don't know, I'd probably say class instead of tribe, but as a, as a tribe, it really falls short <laughs> uh, for the most part. I would say if if professional if a lot of the crap professional cards were not in the game or lost their professional status, that would make middle manager a much better card because now it's reliably conjuring you very good cards instead of crap. But anyway, all right, next. Oh no. Oh no. Root synergy. <laughs> I think we're going to skip Root Synergy. I'll just put this in F tier. All right, now we'll talk about it. Root Synergy revolves, <laughs> revolves around the almighty, the all crappy, the all simpy, the all horrible piece of trash, lump of fat garbage, Starch Lord. Oh no, the chat's going to be doing the copy paste now for the next few minutes. But that is fine. So this not only conjures your roots every single turn, this will also buff your roots by 1-1. One, one. The reason, as I have explained many times, why Starch Lord is not a good card is because if we look at the general roots in this deck, uh, in this game, I mean, 
uh, I'll turn on the chat for this part of the stream. Um, if you if you, <laughs> if you look at the overall um, roots in this game, I'll put it right over here. This is the perfect spot for it. Uh, it they're bad. You know, I mean, you got potato mines. There's, there's just a few good roots. Again, there are several good ones. You have your triceratops. You got your raiding raptors. You have your uh, fireweed. I did make the dino root stack for Spidal, and that was good. That really did contain... I think with the Kabloom class and the way that specific deck went, you actually do have enough early game solid root options to actually make your Star Lord viable. The other root synergy card, of course, is the Potato Saurus, which conjures you a root. Really, not much to say with root synergy. It's more it conjures you a card. Every once in a while, again, even if you get a Potato Mine, sometimes that will protect your Potato Saurus, which is really, really good. Ah, overall quality of cards. Overall quality of cards are like... <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard to say because you have some of the best cards in the game. You have Spike Weed Sector. You have Triceratops. I mean, this is this is a good candidate for best card in the game. You got Raptors, which are fine. Fireweed. This is so good. This is a really really good card. Uh, Rotobig is fine. Spire is meh. But you have like, some high quality, and then you have Trash. <laughs> Starch Lord brings the root synergy down many many rungs. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh. You know what? Just because I don't know where to put it, I'm, I'm going to be putting it in clock tier. I, I really have no idea where to put root synergy. Uh, that's just me defaulting to I have no I have no freaking clue where to put this <laughs> because it's so bad. It's exactly in clock synergy tier. Easily. Easily in clock tier. It's not even a difficult decision now. Deck. I was thinking of making a deck where you play Starch Lord and then you purposely cute your own field. I'll do that someday. I'll do that when I'm in a really uh, interesting mood. We'll put it that way. All right, guys. No more spamming. Get this weak stuff. <laughs> We're solidifying a lot of memes today in this stream. Thank you, Wantech. Long, long time viewer. 13 months. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Juan Tech. All right, let's go. Let's keep it going. We're up to, of course, we're up to science. Science. Ooh. Science has really, I believe, two, oh, three synergy cards. Wow. And the cool thing about the three synergy cards in science is that they represent the three main strategies uh, in this game, sort of. Uh, first is you have interdimensional zombie. Now this was better as a one three, but they, you know, the justification of making it into a one cost two two was that it's more of an aggro card. It does more damage at least until you transform it. Which again, I've explained many times in the tier list, etc. For any tier list, if you want the full explanation of that, why that's a fallacy. But this is still a very good card. It's still is actually quite useful. If they don't answer it, you get a free three drop, which costs one, which is just ridiculous. It's a good card. Uh, it does work again with a lot of science decks. It's sort of an aggro card. Now for the next one, which is Drone Engineer, this represents tempo. And this is really one of the better tempo cards in the game. For budget players, I would vary. Again, the highest level of the game, Drone Engineer does fall a bit short. Uh, but for budget players, I would really suggest you do uh, science decks, particularly let's say with Super Brains, because then you have Headstone Carver on turn one. Uh, and then you're able to like get extra value from your drone engineers and what up any other of the science cards that you're running. So uh, you have tempo. And then for in terms of like a late game finisher, I've been finding this is the third synergetic science card is gadget scientist. So this does help your aggro. This can help your tempo decks be a finisher, but this can also be a late game control finisher. I've been having a lot of success lately doing decks where you run Halocopter or you run with Immortitia, you, you're going to maybe play some of your like bullseye science cards and buff them up with um with uh some of your environments that will give them buffs or maybe with brainstorm you give them sugary tree you can even give them vitamin z you can even give them maniacal laugh with the morticia uh, and then use gadget sciences as a finisher this is really i've been discovering sort of the one turn kill value from gadget scientists uh being actually pretty effective as a late game card so you sort of have all the synergy you need 
uh, in the science class, you have the good ones for budget. You have, again, this is actually a very decent aggro card. This also works very well in Professor Brain's Swarm uh, because this really counts as two minions and will buff your unlife of the party twice, uh, which is a really cool little synergy. All right, so the synergy is, is really all there. Overall quality of cards, again, you have some crap. Average, above average, okay, very good, below average. You got Zombot in there. You have some really, really good cards. I mean, this class contains Beam Me Up. It contains Teleport. It contains Teleportation Zombie. I mean, this actually has some of, like, the absolute cream of the crop premier cards in this game. Interdimensional is fine. You got your Leap Station. What else you got? Some decent cards, some crap. You got Dr. Space Time in here. You got Plank Walker. <laughs> some really, really decent science cards. There's plenty of bad ones, too. Uh, overall, I do think science is absolutely one of the best tribes in the game. You can build an entire deck around science, science and buffs, particularly science going viral with, with Rust Bolt or with Headstone Carver, uh, with Super Brains. So it, it, it seriously is one of the, um, one of the best, uh, tribes in the game. Uh, and I'm going to be putting Science absolutely in S tier. I think it's definitely worth it for any any player in every, any level of the game to uh, be using some Science Energy. It also just does contain literally some of the best cards uh, in PvZ Heroes. And it's definitely going in S. Next. Next. Oh, speaking of good classes. Speaking of the good one, we're going to go to the Almighty. <laughs> Seed Tribe. Guys, there is a Seed Tribe in this game, in case you didn't know. <laughs> you got your Seedling. You got, <laughs> you got Atomic Bomagranite. Look at this, Little Buddy, which is actually one of the best cards in the game. Uh, and you got Sunflower Seed. <laughs> well, there's no Synergy, but you don't need Synergy. You have Seedling. Guys, this is the Seed Tribe. It goes without saying, even if this tribe only had seedling in it, this would obviously be one. You know what? I have a perfect place for seed synergy. It's going right up in clock. Guys, clock synergy, root synergy, and seed. They're all really, they're all really the same. They're all, they're, it's such a close neck to neck, you know, competition for best tribe in this game. I don't even know. I have to put all three of them as, as the three crowned kings. Uh, 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 PVZ heroes, absolutely amazing, amazing tribe. Moving, it's all coming together, guys. Moving, <laughs> clock root and seed. I love how I love how much of a blast this is to Starshler to putting this up here too. I'm loving clock. I'm loving clock tier so much. Next, next, we have three left. Next one, of course, is sports. Ooh. Got some OG tribe. Now, sports, when it was created in this uh, game back in set one, really sucked because this card only had three health, but now it has four. So it survived very well in the field. This is the really the main sports synergy card. Thank you, Simple Tricks. 38 months for Simple Tricks. Talk about long time viewership. Wow, that's three years and two months. That's almost all of them. That's basically, man, man. That's, uh, I haven't been a Twitch partner for much longer than that. Anyway, so, all right, so what's with sports? The main synergy card is going to be Team Mascot, which will grow itself every single turn, but also grow your, um, your tempo, your sports zombies. You're going to start off with your, um, Arm Rustler, even better, your Gladiator, you got your Sumo. Again, these are all actually very good tempo cards. Then you can come in with your Team Mascot which again, usually survives. There's some answers. You basically usually want to play this on height so it doesn't get damaged with to like spike, spike weed sector plus a one drop. They're going to have to be a little more creative, have a hammer maybe, team ups in order to take out team mascot. Uh, but if it does survive, which it usually does, then you have zombie coach, which will protect it, make it survive another turn, makes all your guys survive another turn, gives you a good trade. Everything grows again. Uh, so these are the two main synergy cards. I guess you technically also have... Um, Chump Champion, which is uh, has sports energy. This is not worth it. I've tried this so many times. It don't work. It <laughs> they even buffed this card. I forget. Was it like a three three before? Anyway, so that's garbage. 
Uh, the overall quality of sports cards are actually good. Like Arm Wrestler for a budget card is fine. You know what I mean? It's not one of the greatest cards in the top level, but it's okay. Gladiator, Sumo, these are good cards. Mascot, even Cosmic Sports are some of the greatest cards, but it is one of the greatest Cosmic cards. It really, really is. You got your coach. You got Pogo, which is one of the best cards in the game. This doesn't really have any sports energy, but it's fine. Even defensive end, even rodeo, these are fine finishers, particularly for the budget players among us. You even have um, brain vendor, which sometimes will work in sports decks. Otherwise, generals is just a very useful card in this game to leap for a number of reasons. Um, even again, not one of the greatest cards in the game, but for budget players as an amphibious option, it's good. Decent stuff. Synchronized Swimmer. This is a good card. You can run this in sports decks, especially if you're running Warlord, uh, Intergalactic Warlord in your sports decks. It works really, really well. So sports decks, again, on the highest level of the game, I don't think sports decks are one of the best decks. I think they do fall a little bit short. For budget players, though, I think that this is amazing. If you can have your budget sports deck, if you run going viral in that deck, again, if you don't know what that deck list is just look it up on YouTube, type in Fry em Up Budget Sports. It's in the budget playlist. I'll put that in the live uh, Twitch chat right now. I think if this tribe, because it has overall good quality of cards, um, very good synergy, if this performed very well on the highest level of the game, I, I would probably put this in S tier. Uh, the reason why it doesn't perform that strongly in the highest level of the game is because it involves sticking dry, mostly dry zombie after dry zombie on the field and letting your opponent react to it, which in general on the highest level of the game is not a good way to play uh, zombies at all. Um, even though, again, it's not as much of a liability because you have zombie coach, which again, this is a dry zombie, which doesn't get answered very easily. It's fine, but uh, still in general, that is the problem with sports, the highest level of the game. I'm going to be putting sports in A tier though, because particularly for budget players, um, this is one of the best tribes. You can literally just build an entire deck around and this will carry you. Uh, you might even be able to hit ultimate league with sports decks. I, I, I think it's possible. Maybe I'll, I'll try a new, like a free to play account. I did it with Agrisolar Flare. It's very possible. You can do that with smash sports as well. Kind of interested to see, but anyway, um, yeah, yeah. So sports synergy is going in a tier. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, again, particularly for budget players. Next, did I miss anything in the sports tribe? I think we're good. Two more. <laughs> Next we have, <laughs> we, have <laughs> we have squash synergy. <laughs> Guys, there's a squash tribe. <laughs> did I even know there was a squash? I, I think if you literally would have asked me yesterday, Fry, what, what, what tribe does, does Haunted Pumpkin belong to? I would not have been able to tell you. Well, you got no synergy. You have one of the best cards in the game in Haunted Pumpkin, but then you have, ugh. Bodyguard's actually not bad. Just doesn't have a place in a lot of decks. Really hard to find the deck where Bodyguard is good. Then you have Garbage Kid. This isn't even a squash. It just randomly conjures you squash out of nowhere. This is actually a below average card, particularly <laughs> not in the right deck. Meh. This is okay. It's okay in a few decks. It's outclassed by a lot of a lot of other three drops but it's not bad it's outclassed by shamrocket even though intrinsically if it weren't for shamrocket this would actually be a playable card then you have garbage oh smashing pumpkin holy crap i wonder if like the the two or three good cards in this tribe actually redeem it this is good in one deck i, I don't think we can put this in f because it does actually contain the best one of the best cards in the game I think we'll put this right in D. It's the same as corn. It's probably the same as fruit. Cactus. It's not worse than cactus. Yeah, we'll put in D. That'll be a nice little home for it. All right. And the last tribe. The last tribe, of course, is the is the tree tribe. <laughs> All right, needless to say, it has no synergy, but <laughs> look at the quality of cards. This tribe is ass. This is so bad. Flantern is probably the best card in this tribe and it's not even a good card. Look at this crap. Look at this garbage. Oh boy, we got sampling. What were they thinking with this one? 
Oh, this is so bad. This is like the easiest F tier of the day. <laughs> Tree synergy, guys. Oh, it's... <laughs> Oh man, that was good. That was a good joke, Popcat. You know they like the right, like the little subtle jokes, like at the bottom of the card. This was the best joke in the game right here. Tree guys, tree synergy. That would be great. No, it's not going clock tier. It doesn't even deserve to be in clock tier. There's nothing even ironic about it. It's garbage. Anyway, guys, that was the tribe tier list. I have a whole bunch of ideas I'm going to show you. We're going to be doing keyword tier, li tier list, like for strike through and frenzy. Uh, we're gonna do the waifu tier list. I'm gonna do tokens. What else are we gonna do? A lot of interesting ideas. If you have anything really creative, don't tell me to put all the environments back into tier list. I already did them in their classes. Uh, think of something creative, you guys. Uh, if you have any of those, put them in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I certainly did. This is a great tier list. Peace. This is Fry.